Okay, so this is my existing project. Um, as you can see, I was sort of experimenting with a new dungeon type of... Uh, I was experimenting with a dungeon room that's l taller than it is wide, so I can move up and down and it'll scroll. But I had to keep the resolution really low because these playfields, even though they look plain, are taking up a lot of my graphics budget. And I think it's more important to spend that budget on sprites like the characters and weapons and monsters and fun things like that, not the stupid background. So so anyway, this is the problem I'm having. First of all, you can see the monster is stuck in the wall. You know, he'll chase me once he gets out of that. Which he probably, <laughs> assuming he gets out of it. Okay, well, there he is. That's another problem. He was clipping through the wall and then coming out the bottom. All right, so that little blue dot you see, that's just a, uh, that's just a debug thing I put in there to help me try to work this out. All right, so here's the thing. He chases me, and I can move, and the screen scrolls. That's all cool. It's a bit of a coarse scroll, though. You see, it's very chunky. And I can shoot arrows at him. And I, my character has really good clipping. He doesn't walk through the walls or anything. But the problem is, the monster's uh, pathfinding is really stupid. But you don't have a lot of processing power. You can't just, you can't use A star or any type of normal pathfinding algorithm because it's just way too difficult for the Atari. Um, so basically he's just got basic pathfinding, which is fine in open spaces. You can see, oh, he's so chunky when that moves. Man, so glad I changed it. All right, so it's nice and smooth when you're in an open area like this. You know, he chases me pretty competently. Now you notice the monsters only move when the player moves. Because this is a roguelike game. If you don't move, nothing happens. Or if you don't take an action, nothing happens. So this allows you to sort of plan your strategy. Um, so right now, maybe if there was more monsters or if I was in trouble, um, I could plan out, you know, maybe I should try a different weapon or I should use a spell or something like that. So if I fire an arrow at him, you'll see he has a moment where he can act where I can't. So I've taken my, see how he moved like that. I've taken my action, he moves. And, you know, he might move further than that. I don't know, I'm still testing it. But right now, if you don't move, they don't move. But you can see the scrolling as far as this screen. It just doesn't work. It's all chunky. The pathfinding is mostly stupid. And it's, it's getting so complicated that the game is more about, you know, pathfinding and scrolling. <laughs> what just happened? And uh, bugs and things like that. Then it is about, you know... Where, where is he going? He's gone. Oh, he's at the bottom again. He's wrapped around the entire planet. Um, so, I'm canning this type of scrolling. I still have some scrolling I'm putting in though, and I'll show you how that works now. Here's the new idea I have for dungeon rooms. Since the pathfinding is really difficult on an Atari, and it takes a lot of processing power, I've decided to make the room, you know, fairly open. So the monsters can just chase you around without having to worry about too much pathfinding. But I really like the scrolling effect that I had. So what I've done is, instead of scrolling it as you move, it sort of uses a Legend of Zelda type of scrolling, where when you go through a door or a side of the screen, it scrolls. So, for example, if there's a door on the top of this dungeon, it would scroll to the next room like that. And down, and up, and if you're really fast, you could just constantly go through them. This is just a scrolling test, so it's just a proof of concept at the moment. Now, left and right scrolling is more difficult than up and down on the Atari. So, but I've put it in, and if you look closely, you can kind of tell that it's smoother to scroll vertically than it is horizontally. But since the transition only happens when you reach the edge of the screen, I don't think that'll be that big of a problem. So, the scrolling left and right is a bit of a hack. It's just, it's actually 10 playfields, all slightly moved over. So it's actually going through sort of like an animation of playfields instead of just scrolling it like it does here. So I could make that smoother if I added more playfields, but even with just this playfield, this sort of basic Zelda-like dungeon, dungeon room, um, it's already used up almost half of my graphics budget. And that's with a moderately small resolution play field. And it's mainly this animation here. But I like it, and I'm going to keep it, I'm going to work around it, I think. 
So I've got 22k left over. I wish I had 22k. I actually have 2.2, 2,200 bytes left over for graphics. And this will be it for my play field. But what I'll do is I'll overlay doors as sprites probably and monsters and things like that that are already in the other one. So yeah, and doing it this way uh, allows me to make more interesting dungeons because it it can be more random. It can sort of you know go all over the place, maybe secret rooms and things like that, just with this play field. And uh, the old way of making sort of like a bunch of variations of play fields, uh, it was going to take up way too much, way too much graphics. Uh, it was going to take up too much space. So I had to can that. And not only that, the monsters clipping through the walls and getting stuck and all kinds of stuff. Uh, that was just too annoying. I, this is a better idea. So as long as I can make this, you know, look nice. Uh, I think that scrolling is kind of a neat thing. That'll be fun to use. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dungeon type. I'm going to put it into my current project that uses the other type of dungeon. And I'll add doors and transitions, and it'll start to look more like a game. Okay, so this is my game now with the two elements combined. I have my hero guy here, and I have a scrolling dungeon. Um, I also animated him. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that animation, because he looks a bit derpy in between there, like right there. So he's like normal, and then he's got derp. Normal, derp, normal. Okay, you get it. All right, so, um, right, so I've combined that. I've taken, I've taken out the old dungeon uh, that was taking up all my space, my graphics, uh, my precious graphics space, and I've made this one sort of generic room here. Um, so in the middle of the room, there'll be different monsters and treasures and other things, whatever I can fit in there. But the actual play field's going to be these walls. And when there's a door, there'll be an opening. In this case, all of them have openings because I'm testing the scrolling in all directions. All right, so let's say I want to go up. I just, up, and scrolls up. I'm in a new room up. I can go left, or right, or down. You get the idea. So, right, so the dungeon won't be, like, I guess each dungeon level won't be too large. Um, so you don't need a mini map. And it doesn't take too long to get down, you know, to the harder monsters if you're breezing through these early bits. Um, and not all these doors will be open every time. Some of these, like the top or the right or left, whatever, they'll be closed. Um, they default to open. Um, they default to open because I had to make the play field that way. None of that's important. All right, so here's my guy. I, I disabled the the skeleton at the moment because it was freaking him out when I went through the walls. So, like I'd go through here and then. He wouldn't know what was going on, and then I'd go back this way and freak him out even more. So he's not in here. Um, I think when you leave a room, the monsters can't follow you to the next room. So that's kind of a legitimate strategy if you go in there and it's something too difficult, or if there's something in there you want, or you don't feel like killing them, whatever. And uh, so this is how you're going to traverse the, the dungeons. So that's it for this video. Uh, let's keep going, all right? We, we've got started. The, the, the momentum is there. In the next video, I'll go over, you know, what progress I've made uh, since the last video. And, and whatever else, and whatever other tools and things I've used to get there. The great thing about, you know, writing Atari games is you can't make them big. It's physically impossible to make them big. Already, I've used up, like, a quarter of my space. So I need to start thinking about the scope of my game and maybe limiting it or maybe expanding it depending on what I can actually fit. That's it. See you next time.